In this video, we are going to be looking at internal holders, known as boring bars, for general turning inserts. This follows on from our carbide insert tutorial, that can be found on our YouTube channel, or in the turning insert section, of our engineeringsupplies.co.uk website, under the category lathe tools. As part of our series of carbide insert turning tutorials, please watch our channel for the related video, on external turning holders, commonly referred to as tool holders. Boring bars. This tutorial will cover a quick overview of an internal boring bar's appearance and functions, what the letters and numbers of a boring bar code stand for, and what they mean when picking a holder, how to quickly identify what inserts fit an internal boring bar from the code, and how to select a boring bar to match an insert that you already have. A boring bar is easily distinguishable from a tool holder by having a round shank of which it is clamped into the tool post of a manual lathe or carousel of a CNC lathe. Most boring bars have alignment flats on their shank. For holders without these flats, the bar must be orientated so that the cutting edge of the insert face is parallel to the X and Z axis of the lathe. Boring bars are designed to be fed axially into the bore of a workpiece to either create different shapes or increase the internal diameter by removing material. The ability of a boring bar to shape the inside of a bore depends ultimately on its overall characteristics. These defining characteristics can be determined by examining a boring bar's code. The code. The general ISO code for a boring bar falls into a sequence of two groupings. The first grouping consists of a letter, two numbers, and a letter describing the overall dimensions of the bar. The second grouping is made up of five letters describing the various characteristics of the boring bar head followed by two numbers, the insert size for the holder. The first group of a boring bar code. The first letter, bar type. This letter tells you about the type of bar it is. This is in reference to the material the boring bar is made of and to indicate whether it has through coolant capabilities. Most bars on the market are steel as it is a cheaper material to manufacture. These are classed as S for solid steel with no through coolant or A for steel bars with through coolant. On occasions, the need to eliminate the possibility of vibration or chatter is essential. This is more likely in bars made of steel when machining deeper bores where the cutting forces can make a steel shank resonate like a tuning fork. This vibration is amplified the more a boring bar is extended from its clamped position in the machine. In an application where vibration or deflection is an issue, the use of a bar with a carbide shank is necessary. The properties of carbide make it incredibly hard and far more stable when cutting over a distance. Carbide bars are identified as having the letter C for solid carbide bars without through coolant or E for carbide bars with through coolant capabilities. In recent times, boring bars with through coolant have become more popular. Through coolant allows cutting oil to travel down the core of the bar to the surface of the cutting tip. It is highly beneficial for machining internal bores as the workpiece and insert can be lubricated and cooled, and assists with the flushing of cuttings from the bore, especially if the coolant is used at high pressure. This is more difficult to achieve with an external coolant source, particularly in the case of small or deep bores. 
The first two numbers, shank diameter. These numbers specify the diameter of the shank in millimeters. The shank diameter of a boring bar dictates two factors. The requirement of having the correct sleeve or tool block to hold the chosen bar diameter. And investigating the bar's minimum bore diameter so that you can ensure it falls within the minimum cutting range of the workpiece bore. Please note, a boring bar code will not directly indicate the minimum bore diameter. You will need to seek additional information for this. However, we've made this simple on our engineeringsupplies.co.uk website. Here, you can choose to see or select boring bars based on their bore diameter using the refine results function on the left hand side of the page. Following on from our earlier discussion, it is important to highlight that as the diameter of a boring bar increases, potential vibration or deflection decreases. So, if picking a steel bar, don't always pick the smallest diameter bar that is capable of machining the job. It might be worth considering one with a larger shank that's minimum bore diameter will still fit within the workpiece bore. The second letter, overall length. The last letter in this group symbolizes the overall length of the bar. This is measured in millimeters and is represented by letter to avoid confusion with the shank diameter code. The second group of the boring bar code. The five letters. The first letter. Clamping type. The first letter you encounter in this section of the boring bar code refers to the insert's clamping mechanism. Before we discuss these letters, we must discuss shims. Some tool holders and boring bars feature a shim as part of its clamping system. A shim, also known as a seat, is a piece of ground C2 carbide the same shape and relief as the holder's insert and sits between the insert and the holder. The shim acts as a sacrificial buffer where in the event of some form of catastrophic cutting failure, the insert and shim may break or chip, but the more expensive boring bar is saved. Shims, like inserts, can be rotated to use undamaged edges and are either secured by a pin, clip, or retaining screw. A shim with a damaged edge or corner should be rotated or replaced. This is a consequence of there not being adequate enough support under the insert cutting edge, capable of dealing with the forces or vibrations generated whilst machining. Failure to do this will result in the insert breaking or the bar suffering damage. Going back to the clamping mechanism, each letter corresponds to a clamp style. These can be split into holders for positive and negative inserts. The easiest letter style to recognize is S, meaning screw clamping. These boring bars are almost always designed to hold positive inserts. As a quick reminder from our carbide insert tutorial, a positive insert has a relief angle on its side for clearance and has only one usable face. In this clamping system, a single countersink screw holds an insert with a chamfered center hole in the boring bar pocket and is then tightened with a Torx screwdriver. Boring bars with a screw for clamping positive inserts are the most common for machining small to medium bore diameters, less than 20 millimeters. This is for three reasons. There is no clamping mechanism above the surface of the insert for the cuttings to wrap around. Positive screw down inserts and their screws can be manufactured far smaller than the inserts and component parts of boring bars with negative clamping mechanisms. And the relief angle of the insert and boring bar offers additional clearance 
that we will cover later. The rest of the clamping styles that follow, all apply to negative relief inserts. A negative relief insert, most often has two usable faces, zero degrees of relief, and the hole passing through its center is straight, with no chamfer. The letter P, is a lever lock clamp system. It relies on a pin to hold the shim in place. And uses an L-shaped lever, operated by a hex socket screw, to draw the insert into the corner of the pocket. This system has the advantage, over the following top clamp systems, of having no obtrusive parts above the insert surface. This prevents cuttings, or swarf, to gather or wrap around the tool, commonly referred to as bird nesting. T, D, and M style holders, are all classified as top clamp systems. These holder styles, are fitted with a shim, and have a clamping arm. With the T and D systems, the clamping arm reaches over the top of the insert hole, and when tightened, exerts a vertical and horizontal force, drawing the insert both downwards, and into the corner of the pocket. Comparatively, the M clamping mechanism, uses a special screw, with built-in cam, to retain the shim, and draw the insert into the corner of the pocket. In addition to this, the top clamp when tightened, provides a second line of security, applying vertical pressure on the insert face. The benefit of the M style system, is its ability to remove the top clamp from the holder, while still securing the insert. This can be helpful, if you find that bird nesting is occurring, as a result of catching the top clamp. The second letter, insert shape. This letter helps identify the insert shape that the boring bar accepts. The shape refers to the surface face of the insert. Each letter corresponds to a point angle. For example, C is rhomboidal, with an 80 degree angle, T is triangular, R is round, S is square, etc. The wider the angle, the stronger the insert, with a round, R-shaped insert, being the strongest edge, and a V-shaped 35-degree insert being the weakest. However, it is also important to note, that the narrower an angle that a boring bar can accept, the better it will be, for doing more extreme contouring. Be aware, that as the insert angle narrows, the insert becomes more elongated respectively. This means, boring bars that hold narrow angled inserts, tend to have a larger minimum bore diameters, than those with wider angles. Another important factor when picking a boring bar, based on the insert shape, is the amount of usable edges that the insert will have. The more usable edges that are available, the lower the insert's cost per edge. The third letter, approach angle. This is the angle of the insert edge, in relation to how it is offered up to the workpiece, by the boring bar. Different approach angles, lend themselves, to particular applications within the bore. Such applications could include the creation of, steps, chamfers, recesses, back cuts, or squaring off the bottom of a blind hole. The fourth letter, relief angle. This letter, corresponds to the relief angle on the side of the insert. This is also commonly referred to, as the clearance angle, and are classed as either, positive, or negative. Boring bars that accept negative inserts, are commonly found in heavy industry, where larger diameter bores are being machined. A negative insert has a relief angle of zero degrees, and is identified by the letter N. This allows the insert in most circumstances, to be flipped over, to use the other cutting face. This benefit, means you would get at least double the cutting edges using a negative boring bar, than you would with a positive bar, of the same insert shape, and approach angle. 
Boring bars for negative inserts also have the advantage of being able to take heavier cuts as the inserts are thicker, have more resilient clamping mechanisms, and have shims to protect the bar in the event of an accident. As mentioned earlier, boring bars that accept positive relief inserts are the most popular for machining small to medium diameters, less than 20 mm. The relief angle of a positive insert is better suited to clearing the internal arc of smaller diameter bore, where the underside of a negative insert would foul. The relief angle also creates a super sharp edge, which is excellent for cutting certain materials, such as aluminium or titanium, that would be more challenging with a negative insert's geometry. Boring bars that accept positive relief inserts also tend to be utilized in small lathes, as negative inserts and their respective boring bars are too large to fit in their tool posts. They are also used where, for economical reasons, the same inserts are being used in both tool holders and boring bars. In contrast to negative inserts, positive inserts are available in more than one clearance angle. The most common are C. 7 degrees, P 11 degrees, D 15 degrees, E 20 degrees, and F 25 degrees. It is important to note at this point that trying to fit a positive insert into a holder with the wrong relief angle will not work, despite the shape and size being correct. Either the insert hole will sit beyond the boring bar screw hole center, where it will be unable to be fastened down flush with the pocket face. Or, the insert can be screwed down, but the sides of the insert are not flush with the wall of the tool holder pocket, hence, having no support. The fifth letter, the hand of the tool. The fifth letter indicates the hand, or crank, of the tool. These are either right hand, the letter R, or left hand, the letter L. The orientation of a boring bar is important, as it determines which direction you can cut. The hand of the tool usually depends on the direction of the chuck rotation, clockwise, or anticlockwise. You can identify the hand of a boring bar by turning the holder towards you with the pocket face pointing upwards. In this position, the direction the insert is cranked is the same as the hand of the tool. The last two numbers, insert edge length. The last two numbers of our boring bar code tell us the size of the insert in relation to its edge length, and is expressed in millimeters. For inserts that are lozenge-shaped, the longest edge is used. Where the insert is round, the size is represented by the insert's diameter. How to quickly select the correct insert for your boring bar. For illustration purposes we will use a bar with the code, A20S, MCLNR, 12. From this code, you need to only pay attention to the second section. From this, note the second and fourth letter from the initial block of five letters. In this case the letters C and N. Then, you need to select the last two numbers from the end of the insert code. In our example, this would be 12. This tells you that basically any insert starting with the figure CN and with an edge length of 12 mm, should fit the holder. Examples of inserts that would fit this holder would be a CNMG 120408 or a CNGA 120412 to name a few. How to select a holder to fit an insert you have. Likewise, if you have an insert 
and know its code, you can identify the different boring bars that should fit. For this example, we have an insert with the code CPMT 09308. Note the first two letters from the insert code, in this case, C and P. And then, the first two numbers, in our example, this would be 09. Unlike tool holders, we need to go straight to the second part of the code, in order to select a boring bar to match the insert. S, because the insert is positive and has a chamfered hole for a screw. C, as it is the first letter of the insert code. An undecided letter, where we can pick an approach angle. P, as the second letter of the insert code, tells us the relief angle. Another undecided letter, where we can pick the hand of the tool. And finally, 09, which is the edge length of the insert, according to the first two numbers of its code. At this point we can cover the first part of the boring bar code. Initially, pick the two numbers signifying the diameter, we will return to the first letter of this code section, later. At this point, you must investigate if the diameter of your chosen shank, has a minimum bore diameter, that will fit the hole being machined. If it doesn't, you will either, need to choose a smaller shank, or pick an alternative approach angle, that can give the insert sufficient clearance. An unknown length, this will most likely be determined, by what is available. And finally, go back to the very first letter, indicating the material of the bar, and whether it has through coolant or not. You are best leaving this, till after you have picked a suitable diameter, as it is usually less important, and you may restrict your options. Selecting a boring bar, based on its application. If you are machining a bore, and want to see all the boring bars available, and whether they would fit within the workpiece hole diameter, the best option is to use our engineeringsupplies.co.uk website. Click on our lathe tools section, select turning inserts and holders, and then internal boring bars. Once in this section, you can use our refine results function, on the left hand side of the page, to filter the available options. We highly recommend that the first attribute you choose is minimum bore diameter. This way, you can pick all the minimum diameters of the bars available that are less than your workpiece bore. After that, you can filter by shank diameter, approach angle, shape and size of insert, hand of tool etc. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please remember to subscribe or like this video. This way, we know that we are providing you with the valuable content and advice you need.